Okay, so 6 p.m. I'll call the meeting to order for the policy and personnel meeting. Rise for the pledge. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I believe next would be roll call. Um, Julie, do you want to do that? Or do I sure can. It's only the three of us. <laughs> Just Andy, myself, and, and Kevin. Kevin. Danny Pyatt? Here. Bobby Brown? Here. Angie Schreiber? Here. Catherine Sullen? And Julie Sprague? Okay. So, first item on the, oh, I'm sorry, public comment. No. <laughs> <laughs> Any public comment? <laughs> okay. First reading of NEOLA Update 32, Volume 1, and um, from my guidance, I am directed to go through each each of those NEOLA policies one by one. Um, are they able to follow along? Do they have the draft? Okay. So everybody knows where that is? The directions are there, but if you go to under policies, draft, and then... It is uh, 31 number 2, and it's the one that says 30, for the board. 32, 32 number 1. That's, thank you for the correction. <laughs> 32 number 1 for the board. Thank you. Okay, policy 100, definitions. Any questions or concerns, comments, changes to that policy? Looks like what was added was a legal notice and the official newspaper also being designated according to that state statute. <clears throat> Nothing too complicated there. Right. I'm going to move on to, and just stop me if you need to, association memberships. Also grammatical changes and... Consortium. They changed that title to okay. Consortium of State School Board Associations, I think in case states have one. The only issue I take is when um, it, Wisconsin Association of School Boards is mentioned, that's WASB, so, and they're the ones that we have, are paying to write the, um, the policies, mm -hmm. so to me it's kind of like a conflict of interest that they're suggesting themselves to be in is it this. The, is, is that the same organization? Mm -hmm. Like WASB, you mean? Mm -hmm. Nas oh, National School Boards Association, Wisconsin Association mm. of School Boards, mm -hmm. and Consortium of State. So if it's a consortium of state, then Wisconsin would have the choice to join one of those, but it doesn't replace mm. WASB, mm. Okay. is how I read it. And I really don't know that Wisconsin is in a consortium I anyway. I believe we are. So. No, I just think that... I wonder if that's a NEOLA policy because NEOLA's in other states around yes, us. If it's like that's Minnesota, what I'm Illinois, mm -hmm. Iowa, because okay. I know NEOLA's in all of those states too. Mm -hmm. I just think it would be, it's a conflict of interest for a company that you're paying to help write your policies to put themselves in the policy. That's just but consor my, the consortium of state yeah, so what, school board associations is not affiliated with NEOLA. Right. right. Okay. Uh, it's also that I don't have a problem with. So NEOLA's the ones writing the policies. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. <clears throat> okay. 2210 is curriculum development. A lot of verbs updated here. I did have Amy go over this. I would have said a few years ago we weren't compliant, but with her review process now we are. Okay. Any questions there? Give me a second. Okay. Apparently I looked at the wrong group. Oh. <laughs> the wrong group of policies. This will also come back to this uh, committee again next month. Second. No, I'm sorry. It will come back to the committee. It will come to the board. It will come mm -hmm. to the board Twice this soon. month and June right. for final adoption. Okay. Yes. Wouldn't final, the second and final reading be May 22nd? No, this no. is the first reading for the board May 22nd. Second reading will be June board meeting. Oh, I see what yeah. you mean. The first, thank you. Yeah. That's Julie. two for me today. Yes. 
like the last green area paragraph. The first sentence, the D on deemed, is struck. It does it should not. Mm. Innovative instructional design as, as pre or as, as deemed D. to be yeah. beneficial. But the D is struck. So oh, okay. Thank you. So I have a question on, on Alice has provided regular instruction in foreign languages in grade seven and eight. Um, so if somebody takes a foreign language in say grade eight, then they, when they go to grade nine, they're put into the same level of foreign language because it, I don't know how it's categorized in our system. So in eighth grade, they don't have a, a year of any foreign language. Is it just a semester? No. Okay. Okay, I see. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. Mr. Rogers, is that basically a kickstart to get into the yep. full year the next year? Yep. Thank you. And we have her Spanish and German <coughs> at the eighth grade level. Are other foreign languages available for online learning? There are, but we haven't had any way take advantage of that. Okay. Some kids have considered it. And then Okay. On the bottom, it says the board encourages where it is feasible and in the best interest of the district to participate in programs of, excuse me, educational research. Um, I know we've had some issues in the past where we were part of studies and the board had no idea that that was going on. So I think that would be something that should be brought to the board before we join any kind of study so we know we cover that with with uh, a policy with grants and um, help me out with that Julia we I know did. I brought it up then but I don't know if it got added in I don't remember I believe it did get added in because, and then that would be this would just support that the board encourages where feasible when we're following following that of the policy where okay. we have to vet all the programs that are coming in okay I'm actually wondering what they mean by educational research. Um, so there was a study that we, okay, so we're part of the. That one, I, uh, yep. during COVID, I yep. remember. There was Is that, that one. the one you're referring to? Well, that one and the um, pilot program for, um, oh my gosh, and it's escaping me, I apologize. Um, trauma sensitive schools. That's pilot programs through DPI for Wisconsin. And we were one of either six or nine schools when that participated. You submitted the videos. Um, I don't know what all is in dealt with that because as far as the board doesn't know anything about it. I just said that she didn't bring it to the board because it was didn't meet the um, yeah, financial requirements or something, and then yeah, so she didn't think she had to bring it to the board. But we don't know how our data is being used. And all I know is that the state of Wisconsin is like the leading state nationally for this program. And they're distributing information and best practices from <laughs> all the schools in the state, both nationally and overseas. So I think it would be good for us to know. I don't even know about that, to be honest. Yeah, it would be good for us to know how, how and when our data is going to be shared and with whom, you okay. know. Um, question as we move <clears throat> along, I'm just wondering, with this NEOLA update, <laughs> what it looks like on the administrative guidelines side, you know, do, do, are they changing the language with the administrative guideline with the policy? They don't. We do. Mary Kay goes through that. That's after the board approves this, then we'll go through all the AGs. So then you do like the the um, the fine details of okay. like. Um, we actually talked, I think it was just before you joined the board, about do we even want to have AGs? I was here, yeah. Oh, you were here because 9.9 .9 times out of 10, we look at policy. And it might but, get cumbersome, but. Right. Okay. But then there was into price breaks, so we just thought we'd keep them. Okay. So 2220 is adoption of courses of study. So what is meant by the board shall periodically adopt courses of study through inclusion? Through inclusion.
inclusion in the sequential yeah, yeah. curriculum. So, like a sequential curriculum would be German one, two, three, and four. Okay. So let's say we only had German one through three, and you'd want to include German four, then okay. you would add yeah, them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure so, what that meant. So. Yeah. So Julie, correct me. Did the did the policy stop with study? And that other the green was not there. Green was not yeah. there and had is and being just added. Study. Okay. So it looks to me like it's just giving it some more detail. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. The rest of those are grammatical and the strike on the bottom. Okay. Um, 2221 special observance days. <coughs> are we heading? <laughs> Harbor Day. So we're adding and adding September 11th. Does this mm -hmm. mean that we will be closed on those days? No. no just recognizing just the Just recognizing. Okay. okay. So I'm okay. surprised that September 11th wasn't already there. Yeah, that's really. And we have for. You know, right, but years, like but official. Now it's official, right? Twenty-four thirty is district sponsored clubs and activities. So the only thing that changed, um, so let's say I don't know, um, the Dixie wanted to add a Red Robin special to its menu. We would have to authorize them using our logo. Um, so that's what our rep explained was added here, so that it's all consistent. Is there, I don't think anywhere in here, I'm trying to remember, um, it talks about the, the time frame for starting new clubs. Um, and I believe it's only one a year or one every three years, something like that. Um, the board to pilot, there can only be one pilot piloting at a time, mm -hmm. but that's when there are fees involved and a paid advisor. So we have all kinds of groups, we call them. Okay. I don't know if I should say all kinds, but groups meeting where <clears throat> they're unofficial. So, so no there's fee. no fees, no but they have paid. a license to meet okay. without being um, sanctioned by the board. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, an example of that would be when I don't know if it's called Trap Club or remember the Shooting Club, Ski or something. Yeah, they started and they were not supported by the board to begin with. They were piloting mm -hmm. and they were self-funding. You know, and I think they were eventually adopted as a real recognized club. Okay. You know. <clears throat> okay. Do we have a Trap yes. Club? Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, 3215 is use of tobacco by professional staff, and it's just funny that 4215 says use of tobacco and nicotine by support staff. <laughs> yeah. Um, both of these, they added any um, hemp or CBD oils, that kind of stuff. Okay. That, yeah, yeah, that language yeah. was added to both. And then also they added transporting property controlled by the district for transporting mm -hmm. students they can't be using that okay. so both of those are the same so do you think those titles should match I, I don't want to be real picky but what tobacco for professional staff tobacco and nicotine for support staff so here's our, our do they have two separate employee handbooks employee guides staff and professional you, staff just policies or do you mean our handbook yep, your handbook one handbook okay then i think that they should be the same i was thinking you know if they had two it separate handbooks some on parts melanie and some that are delineated but one handbook okay i think what i think what i was hearing bobby say is the the title itself tobacco okay. and nicotine by professional staff and tobacco and nicotine by support staff is that what i was hearing yeah. say we can recommend that maybe a question for neil or yeah. just keep it consistent for both so 5,200 is attendance. So I actually questioned in this attendance policy, um, the first change in writing, because I know we have plenty of parents who call mm -hmm. 
Um, but then I relax because this is for um, I thought it was a pre-excused, but it's not. Anyway, so I wasn't sure we should leave that in writing because technically then a phone call from a parent for someone to go to the doctor wouldn't be approved. Right. Mm -hmm. And we take phone calls all the time. So Maybe we classify it differently if we get a doctor's note. Right, but this just means um, a handwritten note by the parent or an email. I would say take in writing out. The parent I know. So when you talk to the representative about that question, what what was their reason of putting in writing? Um, he really didn't know. I think so that you have it clearly documented. Mm -hmm. But isn't a secretary taking a note and saying via phone, parent yeah. phone caller, or whatever? Yeah. Would that suffice to in writing? <clears throat> no, because it says in writing by their parent. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a, a hang up, <coughs> Mr. Rogers, about parents calling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. I, w I would agree with that. So do we allow I that now or do we not allow it? Phone calls. Phone calls. We do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you're right, Julie, in the questioning that again, right? So we'll make note of that being changed for the board. Okay. To exclude that? Exclude, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and then everything um, down below in green, mm -hmm. which we're going to talk about attendance this summer. Um, and so we'll go over all of this to make sure we're compliant, but basically just adding definitions and agreeing on what tardiness is and unexcused. I think what they're, what Neil is doing is actually putting more clear definition uh, for what these mm -hmm. titles mean. Attendance became hmm. loose during COVID. Completely. And yeah. All of us are trying to regroup. So, <clears throat> would you say that this policy in general is going, it will come back for? bigger discussion or maybe we would even change it again down the road if we really look at attendance over the summer you're saying possibly because we want to make sure we're coding everything the same mm -hmm. at middle and high school mm -hmm. um, so yeah whatever we come up with you would be privy to in addition to this yeah I couldn't agree more that attendance has gone out the window So are we okay with leaving that as is for the first reading unless the board would have other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 5330 is administration of medication and emergency care. Did Darlene Jansen take a look at this? Mm -hmm. Just to give her approval. Yeah. Did she have any questions? There were a couple that pertain to her area in this subject. Okay. I'm fine with that one, yeah. 5340 is student accident, illness, concussion, or sudden cardiac arrest. So the first green paragraph is just additional language that if there is suspicion of a concussion, mm -hmm. um, the extra precautions that we would take, and then also. Um, the three options that you see below. What to do if you have that suspicion. 
you know, we all assume that everybody would know what those signs are, but are we going to provide training for the teachers to know what those signs, exhibiting signs or symptoms or behavior consistent with? So in, it's been a while since I've taken the first aid training, is that concussions and you know covered in there? Concussions is not covered in first aid or okay. CPR training. Okay. I'm just concerned you know, how many times that a teacher might think that something is there, but it's really not a sign, but they might be. And there might be something simple that Darlene may have out there that can give to uh, one it to Yeah, the first I, day I know that our safety team, you know, when we have a medical emergency, right. you know, we have trained first responding teams, you mm -hmm. know, they get more training and things like that. Um, but, right. yeah, I would think. If there's just a one page somewhere, you know, yeah. One page would probably be very helpful, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. if there's ever any question, you know, those, those teachers are calling that first response team to analyze it anyways. Right. If there's anything or sending that student to Darlene. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would work both ways, but I think a one page would certainly be mm -hmm. The symptoms, some symptoms are yeah. listed here. It's actually a pretty broad list. But I made a note of that, Danny. Yeah. I think it would be good to have at least something put out to everybody about how, like, screen time, like, on laptops or TVs or anything can, can you know, should be very limited after During concussion. concussion. Yeah, the yeah. doctors no. If your teacher doesn't know that, then they're still yeah. having them go on their Chromebook or, mm -hmm. you know, do stuff online, then that would, would not <clears throat> be good. Fifty-four ten is um, promotion, placement, and retention. And then there's a note that says use the toolkit to complete mm -hmm. the bottom options. What's toolkit? So I brought that tonight. The toolkit is uh, like a Neola attachment. So basically, um, we have to indicate what you see in green here after grades four and grades eight, or grade four and grade eight. We have to go through each student oh. now and indicate how it is that student is promoted to the next grade. So what you see in green, there are different avenues to meet that. The first is the state assessment. Um, actually, let me back up. The definitions promoted means you've earned your right to go to the next grade. Placement is when you haven't, you're not getting there in typical Fashion, but then mm -hmm. the school makes that determination, and retention is, of course, um, repeating. So, without getting too far into the weeds, I did ask Tim Bannock about retention because it, there's so much research against it. Mm -hmm. The older you get, until, because I know we talked about this, until you're credit earning. And then, if you don't earn the credits, I mean, that's your natural consequences. You can't advance toward graduation until you do. But in the meantime, at those other grades, then they have us look at um, A, B, and C. A would be the state assessment results. Mm -hmm. um, and B is related to a student's grades. And C then would be recommendations from a teacher group. So let's say in fourth grade, um, we have a student that we're you know, just not finding successes. So then what we have to do is have what we call a student assistance meeting. Teachers, counselor, principal, everyone would be at the table and it would be communicated with parents too. And then for what reason or how can we comfortably send this child to grade five? Mm -hmm. um, if there's an IEP mm -hmm. for a student in receiving special ed cert um, services, that trumps all of this because all you need to do is meet the goals of that IEP um, to advance. But for the others, then we'd have to document um, the reasons or the rationale. So where the green is, are, mm -hmm. will will we be adding language to this? We will. According and that's to that the little tool kit is. Okay. So um, in the first run through, let me see if I wrote that down. In the first run through, 
again because it's not credit bearing. Oh, here. Um, for the state assessment, we were um, thinking that a student would have to score basic or higher in at least one of the subtests, passing at least one of his or her classes, or they're now in Neola, and then let her see the teacher recommendations, um, which are based solely on students' academic performance. So I can't predict what teachers would say, mm -hmm. but it's something we could consider. So is this going to, <clears throat> I don't want to, um, I guess, help students that are, are say, in fourth grade and, and they're not, like you said, they're struggling still. Um, so they would be held back in fourth grade to give them a chance to relearn and get caught up before they get to further classes, further grades? No, unless retention were selected for that. So if that were the um, school's recommendation and parents were on board. Retention is an option, but I'll be yeah. really honest, we don't use it often, if at all, mm -hmm. between 4K and K. We have some retentions there mm -hmm. for a um, because it's voluntary, and um, K as the start. It's so important to have your foundation there. But the older a child gets, um, it just has been found that it doesn't make an impact. It only um, serves to have another year of of being unsuccessful, delaying mm -hmm. anything further. Do the grades build upon each other? So what you learn in fourth grade, you build on in fifth grade, and you build on in sixth grade? Sometimes, but like in writing, for example, the standards are the same, basically. It's just the maturity at which you um, grow as a writer. So we try to find what we call um, mastery standards or benchmarking. Or this is what we would want a third grader to be able to do, fourth grader, but they're guidelines. And mm -hmm. Some come in past those <clears throat> benchmarks already, and some will leave that grade not having met them. But it's kind of like math facts. If I struggle with math facts, and let's say it's in third grade, we want that automaticity, and we said you can't leave third grade until you have them. It sounds crazy, but we'd have 15-year-olds in third grade. Mm -hmm. And that's not appropriate, because with the help and I know there are different philosophies, but with the help of a calculator, I can still grow mathematically in mm -hmm. my thinking, mm -hmm. but it takes all that penalty away because I get my numbers turned around. Okay. So, Julie, under the definitions where you see placement and retention, uh, they're striking up building administrator. My question is, is the building administrator a part of that student intervention team? Could be. Should be. Yes. I was thinking district administrator, but it says building, you're right. Yes. So I, I, would, I would make sure that the building administrator, if, if we had that student intervention team check, that the building administrator part mm -hmm. of that. And it really shouldn't, this should never be the first time a student like that who's struggling should be discussed. Right. We should know from our fourth grade teachers, right, so for example, right. well in advance. In fact, it's probably coming from the third grade teacher mm -hmm. when they meet mm -hmm. and say, please watch, you know, he's had a lot of trouble with math concepts. We haven't seen <clears throat> much growth in reading, so then that student's already on the radar mm -hmm. so that we can that was my next try to make a course. difference. Yeah. And sometimes, <clears throat> Angie, it's a teacher, too. Not all teachers have the same approaches, so I might respond Just really well in right. to my it's third grade teacher and not so well to fourth. And right. so it, so my question, should we mark building administrator uh, that it's it's the placement is made by the determinations made by the building administrator student intervention team just to make sure that that building administrator is always part of that team? If you keep reading Danny under placement, it does say with the oh. concurrence of the building administrator. Oh, sorry. I guess oh. I was, <laughs> Me too. You're entitled so since I'm So when you tell somebody level. else about Danny, he doesn't read the whole sentence right <laughs> I didn't read it until the end. But I do think it's good that they added an intervention team because it might yes. be a speech teacher. It, might, right. you know, it could be right. anyone who's related to or involved in working with that kid. Well, and then anybody like else that. involved in their case team, like if they have outside right. counselors and different um, 
different people on there gets to him trying to help. Yeah, back in my day, if the teacher wanted to hold you back, they could do yeah. it. No question to anybody, you know, and I like the intervention team where you can come together and collaborate about that school. And I like the, the fact that they don't just keep rolling. They're on the radar at that yeah. point, and that we're going to figure out a plan, what we're going to do with them when they come back in the fall to try to disrupt the pattern. Right. So, Clint, since you're the only uh, building administrator, is there anything in here stick up to you that is odd or? Um, the only thing when you were talking about the building administrator being part of those, sometimes like Matt or Anita is mm -hmm. part of them instead. Can so, I think that's okay? That'd be your designee, or there's still a building administrator, mm -hmm. just an associate? Yeah. yeah. Or in the middle school deal. Right. Yeah. 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 I think so. so, next time this. Policies comes back. Do we have that language prepared? Yes, I'll um, see if I can add this if you're comfortable with those yeah. and um, go from there. Yep. Okay. So next is um, 5512. More tobacco. More tobacco. Tobacco and nicotine by students. I'd like that it calls out specifics. Mm -hmm. Just like the, the staff. Now we just have to enforce this one, and then we'll be good. <laughs> May I ask a question about that? Mm -hmm. So if we find that, and we talked about this before, if a student or a group of students, or it is there's reasonable suspicion. Who addresses that, and what is the? I guess I could look in the administrative guideline too. What is the protocol when 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 this happens? It doesn't talk about search. I thought it was about the language itself. Do you want to? Should we answer that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, we we'll, fifty-seven so seventy-one as we go on is search and seizure. So I don't. So it's very difficult when you have the smell of um, marijuana or vaping or whatever to determine who has it. Um, so they do their best and basically what happens is a student or a staff will report it to admin. They kick into action, they can look at the cameras, they can see who was in the bathroom around that time. Um, most students, I shouldn't even say that, some students mm -hmm. say, yep, here you go. But not all. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we just talked recently, for a search, a student has to give consent, which really makes the water muddy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So to search their locker, you have to consent? No, no. their person. No. Mm -hmm. You can search your locker oh. because it belongs to the school. But you can't even wand them without no. their permission. No. Oh, yeah, and who would let you if they know that, mm -hmm. you know. So it's a very imperfect um, procedure, but I do know that districts all across the state are struggling at the superintendent conference. I was just shocked at how much time we talked about it because it's so frustrating. Drugs in school. And vaping, okay, especially because it, you know, it's happening in class. I don't know about here, but other, oh, well, he's still not. Other districts were talking about, um, you know, you have it on your person, so you take a puff in class, and, you know, yeah, unless the kid next to you is going to tell, it, they're so sneaky. It's well, the really design hard. of some of the baby, and I saw on the internet where right. it looks like a highlighter. Yes. And yes. It's exactly. amazing, and I'm thinking, wow. How would you know? Yeah. 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 They were, that was happening when I was here, even, and I had no yeah. idea. So, I, I mean, we do what we can. It takes an extraordinary amount of admin's time. And we talk about flipping the script. Wouldn't it be something if we could talk about student achievement for mm -hmm. that amount of time? Mm -hmm. Agree. And so, but it's hard. Does that answer your question? It is. I just, it bugs me. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, well, so with that 5512, then I kind of jumped to 5771 because we talked a little bit about search and seizure, <coughs> and this has to do with, like we were just saying, personal possessions and mm -hmm. even parking vehicle on school property, use of dogs, blah, blah, blah. And this was all in there before. This only adds that one, um, basically that one green block in there. Right. Did you have any questions on that, Angie? On the search and seizure one? Yeah. One second. <laughs> and I kind of dumped through that. But there's one in between there. But. Um, I don't agree with, and I apologize if you, if you said this, the board recognizes that privacy of students or their belongings may not be violated by unreasonable search and seizure. Where are you, Angel? Um, under Very student, student person and possessions. Um, that goes, I mean, that's opposite of what our policy says right now. Um, I think how that's worded gives the impression that that their belongings may not be searched, even though it says search without reasonable suspicion. Um, it's kind of towards the end of it, so I think that, I don't know, I think it should be stated differently. Because they don't have any, there's no rights to uh, privacy with any um, school property, so meaning lockers. But if you think of it this way, as a principal, I would always have a reason to go in a locker, right? Right. So I think we're covered then. What am I looking for when I go in there? And that's my, um, you know, following the protocol okay. and due process. Okay. Even if we have the dogs in from mm -hmm. the police department, if they hit on a locker, that's why we get to search it. Right. Do they bring them in? This is kind of a weird question. Do they bring them in for like students to check on the student, so they could signal mm -hmm. if we did not in Wasa? I don't know if they have here. I would say that's unlikely. Because the then you're not searching them. The students <laughs> just lockers and the. Do yeah. they do that randomly, anyways? With a dog? Yeah. But what I'm saying is that if a student has something on them, they refuse to search. Right. If you bring the dog in, the dog signals oh. that something is on them. Oh, right. Yes. Then the locker or... You um, have the right to do it anyway. Or find lockers. Yep. I would consider the dog similar to a bond, though. You have yeah. to consent to it. And without consent, they probably can. Okay. I didn't realize you had to give consent for that. Yeah, you have to give consent for bond. Because that's a personal search. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A good point, probably. Is there anything? So, um, I skipped fifty-five <coughs> seventeen because we were talking about those other two kind of together. So, fifty-five seventeen is student anti-harassment. <coughs> what I found interesting with this one is where you see the pink and it's scratched out. Mm -hmm. It says the board will investigate all allegations of harassment and in those cases where harassment has been substantiated, the board will take immediate steps to design, design to end the harassment. At this time, the board has, we have nothing to do with harassment. Well, you would if it made it to your level. You know what I mean? If, a, if it's an employee and an employee files a complaint and it goes through the chain of command. Um, it would come to us as long as the person that is making a harassment is um, still employed or would it come to us no matter what? That's a good question. I don't know offhand. I don't also understand the reasoning for scratching that sentence. Um, 
So I'm looking at the pink. And when, when you say it comes to us, when it gets to that level, like what? There's no mention of any level in this. It just implies that we will be investigating all. Every. Yeah. yeah. Where are of you in the policy? Sorry. The first pink where it starts out harassment may occur student okay. to student. Yeah. That that paragraph. Um, my my comment was that I don't understand why that first sentence was struck. Um, I think that just adds clarity to that it can um, occur at any level. And then I think Angie was saying that the next sentence says the board will investigate all allegations, and that sounds like all and every. Mm -hmm. And I think what you were saying, Julie, is maybe that oh, yeah. that the board would be involved in any allegation of harassment when it got to a harassment level. The board would probably probably be aware anyways. Right, but then... Because it's either a, a personnel matter, a very um, employment matter, or else if it was students, it would probably be to the point of expulsion. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. But right now, we don't have anything to do with any of that. So, do you now have... I understand your question. Is I really it, think I should ask um, mm -hmm. our rep about that. Do you, um, if it's okay to ask, do we have any ongoing... Um, accusations with harassment. Does that happen often? I would not say often. No. Like students. Um, and that's so great. And does it rise to that level? Right. Because it can be an isolated instance that happens all the bullying, time. Bullying, and but then, then the ongoing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The ongoing bullying would be considered harassment. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that we do have some issues with that. We've had issues with. Um, staff I believe as well but I don't know so maybe we should just bring back 5517 again and if you wanted to ask about that paragraph mm -hmm. yeah we won't bring that to the board on the 22nd we'll bring that one particular one back to this committee next month Is that how it goes yep because yeah, on the next line is under other violations of the anti-harassment policy is this board will also take prompt steps to impose disciplinary action on individuals engaging in any of the following prohibited acts. I wonder if they came through your policies, through board policies, which is what this is. It, it, it doesn't imply that. If, if that's what they're trying to imply, that they, you know, wordsmith this a little bit. <laughs> So even if I find clarity in what that means, Danny, you don't want it to go forward? Um, I, I wouldn't think so. I think it would need to come back here okay. uh, yeah. for, for this committee to take it forward. And I see on the, the officers that's, that's changed, the um, compliance officer. But... Neola suggests that we have a male and female compliance officer, and we don't have that now. Right. Is there any reason why we couldn't? I mean, well, I, I think this policy needs a lot of looking at because yeah. uh, the other thing is. Um, In a complaint or in case of harassment or sexual harassment or any of these, is the most appropriate person to be involved in at the director of business services. No offense to you whatsoever, Katie Ann, mm -hmm. but I don't know if that is the most appropriate person to umbrella that, that type of investigation. I understand. So it is under yeah. my umbrella all risk security and oh. all that is under the business, and that's under my licensure as well. I'm required to have a risk manager like part of like my licensure. Okay, so thank you for I clarifying get, it. I, I get, get why get that. it is under my umbrella, but I completely agree. So Tim was on everything. I am not licensed or certified at the moment for it, so I he was taken off. I was not at it. Heidi is currently as well, which is our pupil service mm -hmm. director. Um, but that is why they do call out the business manager. 
Yes, Do we have anybody else in the district that is licensed and certified besides Tim and Heidi was? Would this be appropriate for like a uh, school counselor or something? Well, something that's in, what I'm thinking. Somebody on yeah. The, does it need to be an administrator that is the... It to be more impartial, yeah. almost, you know. And I question the male female as well because if both well, Heidi and I are on there, mm -hmm. I would want a, if a male wanted to speak with the male, that yeah, Say if there's if there are any other questions regarding this particular policy, uh, everybody should email those questions to Julie so she okay. can ask our Neola rep and uh, be able to come back next month with this policy number 5517. Thank you. And uh, I would find out about the compliance officer, what that person has to have in order to qualify for the compliance officer. Uh, because it would be nice to follow Viola's suggestion about male and female uh, to be there. I know Kitty Ann is just jumping to, to do something <laughs> else too, right? <laughs> it's like two semesters away. And I'll yeah, yeah. Make it, but. Um, and then the reasoning behind striking the, those two sentences, the one that I pointed out, and then again yeah. there's another one that's struck further down about um, Relationship between staff and students. It's we'll below that to the green. I, I oh, question that one sorry. Too. Yeah, they just move it from there to the bottom. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's better probably. Like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we good with that for. Yep. Uh, Seventy-four forty is facility security. So talking about non-student visitors or vehicles on the property that under a reasonable mm -hmm. suspicion of some, sorry, that looks to be about it. Uh, yeah. seven, I'm just going to keep going. 7544, use of social media. Is there any um, recourse if any employee or staff, um, for example, put something on the school's Facebook page? That, yeah. that they shouldn't have. I believe it's under conduct, Does maybe. Yeah. Or, um, ethics. I mean, obviously, other than just deleting it. Post under to Facebook's uh, school district's Facebook page. Is that approved by somebody first yep. before the company, the company that, that we manages. have? Yes. Okay. Right. So Katie Ann can't. I'm just using for an example. She can't go rogue and and Correct. put something out there now, because she could under they, own on her own. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's but then as different. an employee, you are expected to be an ambassador of your employer. And so I've talked a handful of times to employees who have had disparaging things. Um, most often, it, they'll just take it down and then, you know, warning or whatever. Um, Does everybody have access to post? On uh, their personal? No, 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 on our... On the district's page. No, they have to send it to the company. Everyone has the ability to send it to the company. It doesn't post right. it until they post it. What makes it yeah. Page. Okay. So if they have any questions, they'll check with Mary Kay or me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Andrea, right? Ribble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it social media? Edu. Mm -hmm. Edu. Yeah. yeah. 85, or I'm sorry, 8405 is Environmental Health and Safety Program. What's going on here? Some